say no without guilt and stay sane, honor your own boundaries. I was in a class this weekend and one of the challenges that people were talking about is their ability to take care of themselves instead of taking care of other people, right? We tend to, as women, but just as individuals, caring individuals in general, tend to put other people first. We have obligations to family, to work, to our friends, and we often put others before ourselves. So just like this lake behind me, you can see the layers of water falling over time. So when we start thinking, I've got enough to go around. I've got plenty to sustain the activities that I'm doing. I've got plenty that I can give to all these other people. We often give and give and give, and we don't even notice our water levels or our energy levels per se dropping until all of a sudden our levels are so low and everyone's out fishing and playing and having a great time and getting what they need from you and you're looking at your energy levels at those water levels that are rapidly depleting and saying what am I going to do how can I sustain this so that's why it's so important to find ways to say no that really suit you and that really feel healthy. So for example, let's say someone asks you to volunteer for something. You can gently say, I would love to help you out with that. This year, I don't have the time. Can you ask me again next year? Or you can say something like, I really would love to help you with that project. However, I want to commit to you at 100%. And right now, I can't give you 100%. So I don't want to commit to something where you're going to end up having to do the work because I can't do it for you. Does that make sense? Do you see how you're telling the person like, yes, I know you need help. However, this isn't a good time for me. In this really gentle, loving way. So you can say no without having any guilt, without feeling like you're letting people down. Because imagine now, have you ever, for example, done a project or tried to get a bunch of volunteers or ask somebody for support with something and they didn't follow through? And how was that for you? Now you're left thinking you're going to get help from that friend. You're going to get help from that volunteer organization. You're going to get the money or the time or the energy or whatever it is that you were asking for. And then it doesn't show up and you're left feeling alone or frustrated, or out of energy, or overcommitted. You don't want to do that to others, do you? So that's why it's so important to let go and say no. And if you do feel that guilt come in, because we can sometimes feel guilty when we say no to others. Some of us are taught that our own self-care isn't as important as helping others. We feel like we need to be the ones to support our family, to do the best at work, to do all the grocery shopping, to do all the house maintenance, to do all the lawn work, to do all the whatever it is, to never say no, to be the best mom, the best dad, the best friend, the best worker, and really put ourselves out there, especially if you're American or kind of in that pushing culture, right? Like we value overworking. We value pushing ourselves to the extreme. We value like watching these motivational videos where we're supposed to get up at 6 a.m. and write down all our goals and do our all goals every day and be successful and be vibrant and work for everybody else and get all your things done and don't ever let anything get in your way. And that's great. Until you get so exhausted that you can't function. And sometimes that shows up as apathy. Sometimes that shows up as not doing a good job and then getting hard on yourself because you're like, wow, I committed to this and I'm not able to do it in the way I wanted to. Or it shows up as your family members saying, hey, why don't you have time for me anymore? Or losing connection in your personal relationship with your husband, with your wife, with your partner. Or feeling like you're so drained by your children, you don't have any time for yourself. Have you ever felt drained? Have you ever felt separate from the people that you love? 
I want you to think about this strategy right now. Some of you have heard this analogy before. Take a, imagine you have a vase or a bucket of some sort and you fill it with sand. Now this sand represents all the small little things that you need to do. You need to do the shopping. You need to uh, wake up in the morning. You need to take a shower. You need to cook food. You need to clean the dishes. You need to vacuum the house. You need to do your work. You need to go to work. You need to work out. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of your kids. You need to take care of your, you like all the little things, right? You can fill that up with, with sand, right? All these little things on your to-do list that really are satisfying to check off. Don't get me wrong. I love my to-do list and I love being like, check, check, check. Look at all the awesome stuff I did today. And then my parents say like, hey, you ever going to be home for dinner? You ever going to come visit us? Or next thing I know, I think I'm going to go camping with my nephews and they're in soccer and I can go to their games and I go see them, but then I don't really have that alone time with them. So instead, think about what is really important to you. Is it your husband, your wife, your partner, your kids, your work? Like what is really valuable? And imagine now in dumping out that bucket of all the little things and put in those big rocks first. That's how you should be scheduling family, maybe your spirituality, your own self-care, your sleep, maybe your exercise, right? Like what are those really valuable things that are going to help you have good health, good wealth, a good feeling of spirituality, whatever that looks like for you, right? Feeling like you're doing the things that you want to do and that you're valued in life. Those are the big rocks. Then you can put in the smaller rocks, maybe those acquaintances that you want to hang out with or the meetup groups or the little bit of travel. The things that are maybe not quite as important, maybe they're on the to-do list for someday, but they're not really priority, right? The things that aren't going to break your business, the things that aren't going to break your relationship if you don't get them done, the things that aren't going to break your connection to the groups that you've promised things to. And then after that, you can dump in the sand, those little tiny things that really in the long run don't make that much difference. I could spend 12 hours today answering messages on Facebook and posting things on Instagram and taking pictures and editing my pictures and going for a swim, which actually I'm going to do because that is part of my self-care. I could also spend that time calling my family members because I know they don't know what I'm doing or where I am, right? I can make sure I get good sleep today. I can make sure I find a spot to camp where I can cook a fire to heat up all the vegetables and all the stuff that I'm planning on making in my cast iron pan. But if I don't make time for that, what I was going to end up is I'm going to end up scrambling and being like, oh, I don't have to, I'm just going to boondock somewhere, which is super great, but then I'm not going to be able to make myself the food. So I end up eating, I don't know, chocolate, carrots, and scrapes because those are the three things I can eat right now without cooking. So do you see how like my quality of life will be better if I put those big rocks in first, if I make decisions on what is actually necessary for me to be healthy, to be vibrant, to be active today, right? How do I not let my water levels drop? Because I'll tell you, I just took a class and I was in class for 13 to 15 hours a day. So I was not able to rejuvenate myself. So I got up this morning, I went for a yoga. I did a hike. I took some breaths and really decided what is important for me today. And that's how you can do it as well. So what is valuable for your own health to keep your energy levels up, to keep your bucket as full as it can be, but with the really important things taking priority? Because if you fill it up with sand, there is no room for those big rocks. There is no room for your family members. There is no room for the people that you care about. There is no room for yourself. And when you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. I mean, you can, right? People do, but not without some kind repercussions, right? An eventual drain on your health, on your happiness, on your joy, on your freedom. You don't want that, do you? And don't you think the people that you love and even your work want you to be the best that you can be at any moment. They want you to be effective. They want you to be efficient. They want you to be content because your work knows if you're not happy, you're going to leave. Your partner knows that if you're not happy, if you're not 
enjoying, if you're not able to engage, it's not going to be a healthy relationship, right? If you're not there for your kids, if you don't give yourself the care, you might get more snappy. You might get more irritable. You might not be a hundred percent present with them because you're trying to multitask your kids with your work and with your partner and with the other things. But if you can set aside time, specific time and places, everybody gets nurtured in a way that can feel supportive and positive for you. So you can keep that water full. You can keep those energy levels high. You can find gratitude and joy. So wouldn't that be great? If you chose to communicate with others so they felt heard, supported, you said, hey, I really hear that you need this for me right now. I don't have the capacity or can I do this instead? Or how can I, I don't have, I don't have five hours to give you, but I have one hour to give you. How can I help? What's the most important thing that I can do for you to help you feel supported? Right? So I encourage you to learn to say no without feeling guilt. Learn to do some self-care. Learn to set boundaries. Learn to nurture yourself, to love yourself, to have gratitude for what it is you are able to do, for the ways you are able to help other people, for the work you have done. Honor yourself for that because I bet you work super hard if you're watching this video. And I bet the reason you're watching it is because you want to learn how to say no. So the step one, honor yourself for all the good things that you are doing, no matter how little bitty it seems. Number two, start reframing for people. How can I help you in this way? I only have this much time. Step three, fill up your bucket with the big things first, your family members the things that are very important for you, the things that nurture you, that, are pa that you're passionate about and that revitalize you. And step four, kind of it's a step, but don't feel guilty. It doesn't matter what other people think about you except for those that you care about. And even then, if you care about yourself, you love yourself and you're happy, you're gonna reflect that outward. You're gonna give other people permission to do the same, to say no, to set boundaries. You're gonna teach your kids that they are valuable within themselves and they are gonna learn how to set boundaries as well. And you don't have to feel guilty saying no. You don't need others to control your level of energy and decide how much water you have in your reservoir and how much you don't. It's not healthy. You get to decide how much room for sand, rocks, water, you have in your own bucket. Take that power without guilt. Thanks for watching. I'm Dawn Bennett, helping you release your emotional baggage so you can have more power, more freedom, better relationships with yourself, others, and your community. I'd love for you to subscribe and please comment down below. How, what's the most powerful thing that you've said no to that's helped you be a better person? Thanks. See you next time. Namaste. It almost looks like I'm on a fake background, doesn't it? But that's how beautiful it is. That's how high up I am. It's pretty great.